Welcome to chapter 12. This is the trade promotion, data-driven marketing, personal selling. In effect, this could possibly also be called the business-to-business -business communication chapter. Now, this is a short slide deck because a lot of the content in here is really covered well in the text. And also, I'm mindful that this is a big week full of content where you've got three slide decks worth of videos. So again, we're in the communication of value proposition. We're looking at specific items and objects within that framework that are of use to you. The question for you is, as a marketer, which one of these uh, factors is most valuable? Now, I will bring your attention to the fact that this is the chapter that contains the write-up on personal selling. So if you are working in retailing, you are your job that's uh, keeping you through university at the moment does involve selling, give this chapter a very serious look over. Again, it's a personal development chapter rather than necessarily content for the coursework assessment. In terms of the data-driven marketing, uh, I want to talk about this as a couple of ideas. We mentioned back in market research, we had things like the big data. Well, data-driven marketing is where you're going to be using your market research skills to create your communication strategies. And in this, you're also looking at this from the point of view of that notion of the customer provides us with value either in terms of cash or information. So here we're looking at the ability to use directed communications based on data we've collected or data that's been volunteered to us. So for any of you who have a loyalty card, for anything, from the Nando's loyalty card through to the Woolworths Everyday Rewards, to the Flybys, to the Qantas Frequent Flyer or the Virgin Blue Frequent Flyer, all of these factors create data profiles about you. And the more cross-wired and cross-linked your data profile is, the more easy, well, how should we say, the more effective it is for a marketer to identify you in segmentation and then be able to identify a data-driven offer. So we look at this in a couple of points of view. We have the unfortunate thing that we still have telemarketing listed as a thing that happens. Um, I frankly think the sooner we drop telemarketing, the better. Start with people have less time for landlines. Secondly, it's intrusive and quite often uh, the reason why we don't, the reason why we interact with the firm over a website is that we don't want to talk to people. We also have in direct marketing things like the directed email offer, the directed coupon offer. It's worth giving this a look over. Uh, the direct advertising can also be direct response messages. Again, these are uh, where it's call now or it's an advert on your phone, click through to follow through or it's an ad on a website. These are still, telemarketing used to be powerful, it's declining. Direct response advertising is variable. In data driven, I also just want to uh, raise the point here that as we are building data profiles on ourselves, there are ethical concerns to be raised here about what how the data is used. Effectively, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to communicate with the audience in a manner that's not creepy. Now, there's a case story about Target in the United States who could work out whether a customer was pregnant. And they did this because they looked at their data profiles of pregnant customers' purchase patterns. And they realized that the purchase of a particular type of skin cream was a 60 to 70% likelihood indicator that the dry skin was an indicator, early indicator of a pregnancy. Because on their data profiles, they had re noticed a consistent pattern, a correlation between purchase of a vitamin E skin cream and five months later, purchase of nappies and baby products. So the story goes that they, start, they could basically work out you were pregnant before you were. Or what they were also doing is that instead of going and then suddenly say congratulations, it's a child, they were modifying the mail outs that they were sending to you 
to drop away products that would not be of use and increase the frequency with which baby products were being mentioned or appeared in their customized catalogs. So the idea was that they would start laying the groundwork, the branding, the brand loyalty to baby products before the, the target market actually realized that they were pregnant. And therefore, when they were realizing they were pregnant and say it was time to start buying, here was the material already preloaded in the awareness and the interest level. So that was the principle. It was also kind of creepy. All right, the personal selling. This is the business to business end of proceedings. We have a bit of personal selling at the retail level, and we have a bit of stuff on retailing in the textbook, which you are free to read for yourself and train up on, because I think a lot of you will be getting retail experience at this point in your uh, academic and personal careers. The personal selling is also one that draws heavily on some of the stuff you learn in services theory. Because you're thinking about this, this is interaction, it's inseparable, it's inconsistent, it's got all the facets of service. What you can do and what's useful about this is that in personal selling it's the direct of interaction. It's also really useful from a market research point of view is that the personal sales team gain a lot of data and insight about their customers that they can record in a marketing information system. And I used to work for a firm where we had a marketing information system that we, every time we finished a phone call with a client, we would jot down information from the phone call, including notes of personal interaction. If we'd mentioned something about, uh, if they'd mentioned something about children or what they, you know, how was the weekend and they'd mentioned something about the kids, we'd make a note so that when we talk to that person again next time, we could ask them, you know, casually in conversation, oh yeah, how's the family? when we knew that they had a family. So that personal selling part, we were able to start building up our rapport and our customer relationship. So it brought in customer relationship marketing, which is a feature in the back of the services chapter. What you do in the role of personal selling is basically you also have the closeout. If you've got a complex product, so again, drawing back on your theory from product and from innovation adoption. If the customer needs to be worked through the complexity of the product because the relative advantage is not necessarily immediately inherent, then personal selling has a role here. This is why personal selling is really important in the retail level when we come to things like clothing. The relative advantage of the clothing comes from the fit and from an external appraisal. So having someone in the store who can assist you get the right fit, get the right style, and get the uh, and give you the personal appraisal that is reassuring that this is the right decision, that gives you your relative advantage, your compatibility, and reduces down some of your complexity. All right. In terms of what we want to do with personal selling, this is the uh, near to last elements of this slide deck. Basically. Personal selling also has some problematic elements. Uh, you want to be very careful when you are, as a marketer, setting up a personal selling scheme that you want to have your sales crew on a combination of a retainer contract so that they have a reason to care about the ongoing reputation brand of the firm. Because if you take a salesperson who's only interested in working on commission, they're not interested in whether the product succeeds they're interested in closing the sale, they become very transactional focused, and they don't care if they burn every possible customer that they ever get, as long as they bank the cash, they can go somewhere else. So you wanna watch for that. Also, if that's your approach, I mean, good luck, but you're not a marketer. You're basically a slightly better, uh, well, slightly better trade skill uh, con artist, realistically. If all you care about is closing the sale and not about ensuring that the product does what the customer wants. So you want to be careful on that front. You want to really watch that um, your personal sales things have a, and your personal sales objectives don't encourage selling over customer satisfaction. 
And this is the point. The, the transactional selling is where you are on your commission and you don't care. You just want this sale now. You don't care about future sales. You're not necessarily even going to be there for future sales. It's got its role, but it's a poorly, I think it's a poor use of marketing. And I'm convinced it is marketing. I think you're in sales orientation at that point. Relationship selling is where you are trying to get ongoing recurring sales and longer term larger sales. Uh, the relationship selling, there's a lot of stuff that works on this in the business to business market, so I'll get you to explore that. Finally, the last thing I'm going to point you to is for those of you who are working in sales, the tale of this chapter is about the creative selling process. So rather than me talking through it, I'm going to encourage you if this is something that you are working in the field at the moment or you think you're going to hold a retail job um, in the near future, work through this part of the chapter, look at the techniques, look at what's going to be needed to do the sales and the selling and upskill personal development, upskill time. Not necessarily going to ask you about this in terms of the course content, course assessment. I'm going to recommend it to you as a personal development element. And that's one of the fastest slide decks you're going to cover because it's one of three um, that needs to be addressed in a short period of time. As always, if you need me, connect to me on the platforms in front of you or hit me up on the email, stephen.dan.anu.edu.au or connect across on Twitter at Stephen Dan.